All right, so I picked up this PDX 2000 a couple years back. I uh, never really used it a few times, but it has some issues. Uh, one of them, the start stop button is a little finicky, but this is one of the early production models. And they're known for having this weird vibration issue which I'm going to show you how to fix, but it's real hard to hear it. So when you hold the record with the motor running, I don't know if that's picking up in this speaker, but it sounds like a purring cat almost. So I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Start by obviously removing your cartridge and your vinyl. Um, I'm going to take the platter off because I'm going to be flipping the turntable upside down and I don't want to warp it. Um, there's nothing really to rest it on without putting pressure on the platter or the tone arm. So I'm going to go take this to a more clean space so I can work, open it up and work on it. So um, before you're going to do this, you're gonna need a few tools. You're gonna need these 470 ohm 0.25 watt metal film fixed resistors. This is a pack of 100. It cost me about $6 on Amazon shipped. So pretty cheap. Um, you're gonna want your flux paste, desoldering braid, screwdriver, and the shitty ass soldering iron. And then don't forget your solder. And then I like to just keep a tray for all the screws are gonna be taken out. Um, there's quite a bit of screws on the very bottom. So let's, let's get ready to take it apart. So I'm gonna start by removing the platter, which is real simple. Take off your slip mat. Two screws here. I'm going to lay a little pad down. It's a little towel here. We're going to flip the turntable upside down and remove all these little screws here. Once it's all unscrewed, um, it just comes right off. You can set it aside. And then our focus is going to be on this board right here. So we need to remove that from the turntable. It's not too easy, uh, not too difficult. A lot of these are just quick release connections like that one. Um, so you can just go around and Unplug all of them. And by the way, this turntable has been modified by the previous owner. Um, they internally grounded it here and they disabled the switch. So your turntable inside might look a little different than mine, but this board here is what we're focused on and that should all be the same. And then one thing I like to do is just take a photo, nice photo of 
things before you start disassembling it, uh, just so you have a reference point in the future in case you forget where things go. Uh, most of these connectors will only fit on one area, so you're not going to accidentally put it here or here or anything like that. We got all the grounding wires removed. Again, your turntable might look a little different on the inside as far as these wires go, like this one here. I don't know what that's about. Um, but the next step is we're just going to remove these little screws here and we'll be able to pull this board completely out. seven screws total and once you've got them all removed this board comes right out so we're gonna be here removing some of these little diodes and resistors the D stands for diode the R is a resistor and the C is the capacitor. So I'll put up a, a nice graphic of the ones we got to remove. Um, we're going to be removing several of the little diodes here and then swapping these resistors with the 470 ohm ones that we purchased. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get a little marker and I'm just going to put a little dot on the ones we're going to be working on just so it's easier to reference. Here's the ones we're going to be working on. So these are all the diodes we're going to be completely removing. Um, and then there's three resistors we'll be swapping out with the new ones we bought. So I'm going to start by just identifying these little diodes are very tiny and some of them are confusing like this first one D706 which is right here it looks like the printing is for this yellow capacitor but it's not underneath that diode there's actually an arrow pointing to the side so it's a little confusing the first time I had actually remove this capacitor here and realize I had to put it back and take that guy out instead. So the tricky part is all the soldering is done from the other side of the board, which has no writing on it. So you kind of got to figure it out where it belongs. So now that you've identified the things we need to remove, you're going to get your soldering stuff set up and get ready to remove some of these diodes and 
resistors. This is the bottom of the board. I've marked all the ones that we're gonna have to remove. I don't know if you guys can see that. So now you're just gonna have to desolder all those areas, which I'm not the best at, so don't make fun of my technique, please. <laughs> well, unfortunately my phone died while I was desoldering it, but you can see all those parts that I marked earlier with the red pen, I desoldered and little diodes and resistors are here so eight total so these are all the ones i removed you can see there's little holes behind them so all the ones with the r's there's three of them so one two and three We're gonna be putting the resistor here. And these two holes. And this one here. There's only three of them. And it's pretty simple to do. I'm gonna start by getting your resistors. So they come in a pack of 100. Them all papered together like that and we're only gonna need three of these guys so you just rip them off so all you're gonna do is you just kind of bend them down and then these ones are a tiny bit wider than the previous ones So you're going to just make a little shape like that, insert it through the holes on the board. So we're only doing the ones with the R. R, seven, six, nine. And you're just going to repeat that two more times. So we got the three resistors here. The other holes are just going to stay open and doesn't appear to have caused any issues. Uh, so now all you have to do is flip them over, solder them from the back, and then trim these little posties off. And then you just button everything back together and you're good to go. So now you got them all soldered in there. You can just trim those little pieces off and that is it. Try to get some of that goober off. And she is done. So now all that's left is to put this thing back in and screw it all back together. Pretty simple. Just guide this back in. Make sure none of your wires are in the way. Then you can just go around and make sure all these are nice and secure. Make sure hold your motor in place. So that's pretty much it. Then you just put the back cover on. If you have zip ties, you can go ahead and tidy that up. But it's 
Not totally necessary. Missing one, but it's okay. Just wipe it down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol since you got everything apart. Um, so then, all that's left is put the platter back on, just line these holes up like so. And then we will plug in here. So everything still works. Um, can slow it way down. And I don't know if you can hear it. I probably can't hear it, but. It's not making that kitten purring sound. Um, all you can hear is the platter sliding under the slip mat. So, things good to go. Thanks for watching.